SQL 576, they introduced a generated column or virtual column. And the idea behind this is that this column will get its value based on some other data. So here in their example, you can see that they have a triangle and then they calculate the side C from the triangle based on the given input of side A and side B. And then they have this as with the square root of side A times side A plus side B times side B. So the idea here is with creating a triangle, a side A and side B is given. And so then you can see selecting the data from the triangle table that the side C is automatically calculated with the data based on side A and side B. And introduced in Rails 5.1.0 was the support for the virtual generated columns for MySQL and MariaDB. So in this episode, we'll look at why we would use a generated column and how we would interact with it within our Rails application. And to use this feature, you will have to be using Rails 5.1.0 or later. So to get started, I'll create a Rails scaffold for users where I create a name string, and then I'll create a upper name and I'll set the type as virtual, and then I'll create a name length, and I'll set this to virtual. So then if you pull up your Rails application, go under the DB folder, migrate, and then the migration file for our users, you'll see that we have a T virtual upper name and a virtual name length. For the upper name, we can call this a string, and then we call as, and with the as, we then pass in some SQL query. And in this case, we're just going to call upper and then reference our name. And then for the name length, we can do something similar, except this time we're calling an integer type. And then we call length on the name. And in this case, we're also now passing this stored true. And the difference between passing stored true and not having it all is that one will create a virtual generated column and the other will be a stored generated column in MySQL. And the difference is that a virtual generated or in the first example that we have here, the data will automatically be generated every time the query is ran. Whereas for a stored generated, it will be stored within the database. So the former option will be more computationally expensive on the database side, whereas a stored generated will increase the database size. So you wanna make sure that you're picking the right ones to use. And one use case for using a stored column is if it's going to be indexed and you wouldn't want to run the virtual generated column having to generate all the calculations every single time that you're searching for records because that would be really expensive on the CPU on your SQL server. Whereas if you're using a stored generated column, whenever you create or update the record, then it would update the stored generated data, and then each time you do a query on this column, it's not going to have to recalculate everything for all the records. If we look at the user's table structure, you'll see that the upper name has the extra options virtual generated, whereas name length has the extra options stored generated. And it is important to know that if you are going to be using the generated columns, and if you did use a scaffold, then you want to make sure that you delete the form inputs from your view because this data is going to be automatically generated. So in our case, we would just have the name attribute that we we're going to get the user input from. So launching our application, if we create a new user, and when we submit the form, you'll see that it automatically calculated the upper name, and then it also calculated the name length. If we were to update the record from John Doe to Tim Doe, you can see that it also updated the upper name, and then it also recalculated and stored the name length. So the concept of these generated columns can be extremely useful if you have a very complex calculation that you want to leverage onto the SQL side. And it can also be very useful if you have a JSON data type and if you want to index one of the keys within that attribute. However, keep in mind that this is just a tool to add to your tool set, and I wouldn't go polluting an application with virtual columns everywhere because that could start raising its own complexities. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.